I'm about ready to start. It's uh, 2.14. Okay. So, hi, welcome everybody. Um, I'm really happy to see such a good turnout for such a uh, dark title. Um, obviously, there's some interest in, in, uh, in the title. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you all. So um, before I start, the most important thing is to say, OK, we're done. <laughs> so I had to get that joke out of the way, because as soon as I came up with the title, I, I thought that that was going to happen. And uh, I apologize. I speak no French, but I do say thank you. Merci. Um, so um, yeah, uh, my name is Ben Troop. Uh, I I've been around the game industry a while. Um, I currently run a little studio called Frank Interactive that was responsible for a PlayStation VR launch title called Headmaster. Um, and I also teach uh, game design at Champlain College, and I live in Burlington, Vermont, which is about an hour and a half south of here. Um, and so previously, I was at Sony Ben Studio back when they were working on Siphon Filter, which for all you old people was probably fun game like me. Uh, and then I was an artist there, and then I moved to Vicarious Visions, had a couple different stints at, at VB, um, and was a game director towards the Skylanders franchise days. Um, over the years, I kind of grew myself into the all singing, all dancing game maker person. Um, and then Unity came along like 2008, 2009. I don't know, how many, how many of you are long time Unity users? Okay, so, all right, the, the, the Unity, the guy with the Unity shirt on the front, unfortunately. So, yeah, he's better on. Um, so, uh, so Unity was like a revelation for me. Uh, and then in 2009, they ran this thing called the um, Summer of Code. Uh, and I submitted a proposal for this thing called Detonator. Um, and uh, I'm just curious how many of you have heard of Detonator. OK. <laughs> so uh, I'll, tell, I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, so, um, so what this talk is is uh, about destroying things, destroying objects in Unity. Um, what you're seeing here is kind of a, a run through of all the different stuff that I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to start really small. Uh, just get a particle in there, and then I'm going to go through and build like multi-stage uh, explosions. Um, one of the things that I'm going to get into is how this integrates with game systems. I think that um, in the past, uh, I've done stuff that's just been about, oh, maybe a good effect, but the way that you interact with it is just as important. Um, and so, uh, <clears throat> just so you know, um, really position this talk for people in the middle, um, programmers who like art, artists who like code, designers who hate everybody because they don't want to work with the programmers and the artists and they just want to figure stuff out. Uh, I think that the, the nice thing about the tool is that you don't have to fit into a predefined slot. You can, you can uh, get in there and make visuals if you're a programmer and, um, you know, I think that that's... Uh, that's one of the great things about it. And I also am interested in speaking to team leaders who have considered putting more destruction effects in their games. Uh, you know, even if you're a team of one and you're leading yourself, which I've been there, um, you should understand the scope of what you're doing before you get into it. And so I, I want to make a, a quick case for um, why destruction is cool and, uh, and why you should consider it. Um, it's also definitely for people that like this. This is a tweet I saw the other day. It's this, uh, that's a cotton ball with LEDs in it, and somebody is going and making like physical explosions with cotton balls and like their models. And I just think that's the coolest thing in the world. Um, and many, many other people retweeted that. I thought that was cool too. So essentially, what we're doing is the virtual version of cotton balls with fiber optics. So. Um, 
So uh, one thing I want to just be clear about is that I'm not going to be talking about um, large-scale fracturing of the world, like Battlefield 1 type, everything blows up type stuff. I think that's awesome. Um, if there was a, a turnkey way to do that in Unity, I would use it too. Uh, but um, uh, there currently isn't. And But there are many good presentations like that GDC Ball that you can get into uh, to see how much work it is to do, to do that kind of thing. It's, it's quite a lot. Um, and there have been some good prior talks on that. Um, in terms of Unity for the large scale stuff, there there is there there are packages you can get. Um, you know, there's lots of attempts. These are the kind of the ones that I I saw as kind of the top of the heap. Um, they all have their upsides and downsides uh, as far as I'm concerned. But um, I, I kind of think that uh, the basics of just blowing up an object can often be too prescriptive in things that you get, um, and so. Uh, I want to address that with this talk. So, um, so I want to talk a little bit about Detonator. So, Detonator was this thing that I, I made in 2009, and I call it a parametric explosion system. So, I'm just going to show you um, what it was. So, this is before the asset store. This is before shuriken particles. Like, this is this is when the particle system could like barely do anything. It could like draw particles. <laughs> Um, and so I built this thing that uh, let you kind of change some values in the inspector and get different kinds of explosions, and, and I made it to be totally customizable and, and all this stuff that you could uh, wrap it all up into a prefab. Um, I did a lot of analysis about what goes into an explosion, kind of breaking it into like all the different components and built a component for each one. Um, but ultimately, uh, the way that so. <laughs> And also, I need to mention that it's uh, asset store ID one. I don't know if any of the Unity people are aware of this, but apparently, so they had like four things that they had people do for that summer of code, and that they were like, let's have an asset store. And they're like, let's fill it with our four things, and one of them was, uh, or the first one was Detonator. So it's gotten downloaded a lot. It's gotten a lot of use, um, okay. but I think that it's it's over the years proven to be a, a little. I think a disservice to people because it's sort of I've seen tutorials that are like learn how to do explosions in Unity and it's like step one download detonator and use the old particle system and don't like don't have anything impressive. So I, I mean I think that those are fine particles for 2009, but I don't think they're very impressive now. So um, updating that would require a lot of stuff, but honestly things have changed and I'm I'm really at this point if you look at the scope of everything that goes into destruction, it's a lot more than just the just the explosion. Um, and I think that the particle system in Unity has gotten a lot better, the rendering's gotten a lot better. It's not as hard to make a good explosion. So this talk is gonna be, in, you know, for a good portion of it, about how to um, build an explosion. Looks good. So um, when I talk about the leaders deciding if you're gonna do things blowing up, you know, many things have parts and fracture, uh, there's a lot of parts to it. Um, and Something that uh, I'm wanting to, to do in this talk is combine the visuals of, um, of destruction with the game elements. And ultimately, by the end, I will have a package that I'm going to post to GitHub, and I don't have a name for it yet, and maybe you can help me with that. But it's going to be a uh, collection of decoupled components that not only let you do explosions, um, but let you manage health and damage of breaking up objects. And it's kind of like a little prototyping kit for um, not blowing stuff up by hitting a button, but blowing stuff up by shooting it uh, and seeing what happens. So I think as far as game designers go, that should be a little more fun than just placing a prefab and watching an explosion, but then saying, how does that fit into my game? Um, and you know how it fits into your game, I think I, I just want to make a quick case for why do this? Um, so I don't know how many of you know about like uh, behavioral psychology, and my wife is a behavior analyst. And one thing that she's taught me is that one thing people hate is being ignored. Like you might think punishment is bad. Try ignoring someone. That will make them bad. And destruction is a way of listening to the player. And I think that's why I'm so drawn to it, is because starting out as an artist, kind of ending up more in programming and game design, I find that that moment of things blowing up is like, 
the game saying, hi, I'm here, I, I believe you, you're powerful, you're awesome, it, it, I, you got it, okay? So when I had a chance to make this game called Headmaster, which is a game of that, okay, so I found this mechanic about heading soccer balls in VR, and it ended up being inter interesting for all kinds of strange ways. Um, so, uh, I ended up kind of going a little further with it than most people would go. So, so yeah, so uh, Headmaster came out with PlayStation VR, and uh, there's soccer balls with dynamite and strapped to them, and you can blow things up. And that was me saying, I'm going to do whatever I want. I've just got India, I've left Activision, I'm going to make money there. So, um, that was important to me. Now, other people, like, you might not care about destruction. Some developers are less concerned with it. Here's a shot of Destiny 2. Um, they, they are not prioritizing that. I'm not saying that they are, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying, for me, like, I'm placing my parties in, in different places. Uh, people get excited about Destiny because of, you know, the metagame and all the gear and all the, you know, camaraderie. It's a wonderful game. But another point I want to make is it's not about budget. Like, it's not like AAA equals destruction and indie equals lame. Like, if you decide to do it, you can do it. So, <laughs> the keys to good destruction, um, just top level, are budget for it. Like, the size is important. Um, get good effects. Get the timing right. Respond to the player and allow the system to interact. Um, that last one, I think, is one that can kind of get overlooked unless you're architecting it from the beginning. Uh, and so um, I think that, uh, as an example, when something explodes, does it deliver damage to a radius? Are those things listening for damage? If they get damaged, are they going to break? So, like, having all these components be decoupled will give your game a chance to surprise you. And ultimately, that's what that's the moment that I like the most in game development is when I build something and I play it and it does things that I didn't expect. So um, anyway, there's a big, long-winded way of saying uh, destruction is important. It's not easy. It's inherently multidisciplinary. It is time-consuming, but I think that uh, it, it does pay off if you put the effort into it. So, I, I have decided um, to uh, go with a high degree of difficulty presentation here. And so what I'm going to do is actually run through live demos of some things using this stuff. Uh, you know, I, I just feel like I'll be able to talk to it, uh, you know, a little more, more fluidly than if I were just talking over a video or something. Uh, it won't be as rehearsed as it would be, so I might screw up. Uh, it'll be really tense. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, so anyway, um, so the first thing I want to get into, in, in in terms of the overall thing, is uh, actually building an explosion. Um, so, like I said, detonator was a thing that would let you drop a prefab in and get a old school explosion. You're using the old school thing. I want to show you how to build an explosion now. Like, how, how, would, how would you go do it? And there are a few good packages um, on the asset store with assets to do that. You could, you could go do that, but um, it's not the hardest thing, and, and uh, things have changed uh, over the past you know, several years in, in how to do this. So um, one of them is that the vast majority of explosions even stylized ones uh, are using like flipbooks, like animated textures. And so, step one, I think for for anybody in okay, I'm gonna start doing explosion work is get some good source. And uh, so I, I kind of sat down. I was like, okay, where can I find this stuff? And um, you know, there is excellent paid stock from uh, Action VFX and Shutterstock. Uh, it's not super cheap, but if you're a studio, it's like you get the budget for that. Um, you can totally make your own if you're like a badass 3D artist. Uh, Blender, like if you can understand Blender, you can do some amazing things. Uh, but the thing that I found that was that actually the most uh, sort of nice was so Unity. 
this is like Unity Paris or something. I don't know if the Unity guy here nods. Um, that, so, <laughs> uh, Unity actually put out a, a few resources that are really helpful in this regard. Um, they created a uh, VFX toolbox image sequencer, which does this thing which you wouldn't think would be hard, but kind of is a rare thing. It, it'll take a sequence of images and lay them out in a grid and do all kinds of post-processing for you. So I'm going to show you how to use that. And then they gave a whole bunch of source, which I have no idea where they got this, if they made it or, or whatever, but it's like actually been source. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you how to get that into a part of the system and, uh, and actually get it, get it working. And I'm going to do that live. So, okay, switching over to you. That's not, that's that other game I'm going to show you. So, okay, I'm going to set for this. <clears throat> so, the first thing to know is that, uh, so I've already dragged in one of the textures from that, from that web page. Um, and to make a particle system out of it, it's pretty simple. You go 3 d or sorry, you go effects, particle system. And um, so the, the thing that you want to get into the animated textures is texture sheet animation. Okay. And then there, you need to make a material. Uh, and one thing I'm going to get into later is like what actual shader do you use in this day and age for particles? Um, there, for the longest time, in Unity, you used uh, um, particles like additive or particles alpha blend, um, and now they actually have a uh, standard shader that came out uh, built into uh, 2017.3, um, but you can go back and find it as early as like 5.6. Um, and I'll get into some of the advantages of, of, of doing that later. So, um, but anyway, so. If I go and make a new material, and I'm gonna just call this test explosion, and I'll go the old school way because I'll show you the, the stuff with the other one later, and then drag your explosion texture into there, then go back to your particle system, assign it. And then you'll notice that, oh, okay, it didn't automatically turn into an explosion. Okay, so let's, let's actually fix that. So um, first thing is speed. Uh, we're going to set that to low. Um, but most importantly, we are going to change this value on texture sheet animation to match the number of cells in that, in that texture sheet. So you notice that it was 5 by 5, so I do 5 by 5. So look at that. All of a sudden, I've got animated textures on there, and it doesn't look anything like an explosion. It looks like a million little explosions. But that's fine. So then I'm going to turn this down. Make that zero. There's a field to make bursts. I'm just going to do one. I'm going to chill that guy out, keep him from running away. Okay. And then the lifetime, the lifetime of the particle. Oops is what's going to drive the frame rate. So if I set this to less, then it's going to be less, and its duration is how often it loops. And you notice it's going to kind of jump all over the place, so that's actually a single particle that's being emitted. So let's make it a sphere, shrink it down, and now it's going to stay in the same place each time. So uh, next to my spaceship here, um, it's not quite big enough. And I need to give props to um, asset store vendor named Pixelmake, who made a free spaceship, which I just grabbed and used for this demo. So that's what this is right here. So what we're going to do is basically just make that big enough so that it covers up the spaceship. Okay, it's not like the most glorious thing in the world, but I mean, you're making a mobile game. That's not like the worst thing I ever saw. So those assets are available um, uh, if you just type like Unity Labs Flipbook, uh, you should be able to find them. 
Um, but like I said, I'm going to be putting a lot of this stuff uh, up on a GitHub, so you'll be able to kind of breadcrumb your way to it. So <clears throat> I'm going to skip ahead to um, uh, this image sequencer tool. So let's say that you got your own source, or let's say also what can happen very often is you get a flipbook like this, and it's only 5 by 5 so that's 25 frames. You, you notice that it starts to strobe. Like, if I want that explosion to be, like, a little more grand, and I do, like, 3, uh, it gets kind of, like, a little, a little jumpy. So you may find that you want to go author your own flipbooks. Um, so this is actually a download off of the web page that they had there. And so I'm going to go to uh, Experimental, VFX Toolbox, Image Sequencer. And so with this thing, it actually is driven by an object that you make in the hierarchy. So I'll just like show you where you do that. You cre create, oops, not that, create uh, VFX Toolbox Image Sequence. So I'll just call this test. And this tool is actually awesome. Um, so what you do is you take a, a series of frames. Um, I downloaded a bunch here. So these are folders like filled with a bunch. So take it and drop it in. And now you have all these guys in here. You can drag this. Um, and then the way that you turn it into a flipbook is they have like a stack of processors. Um, and it's not just making a sheet. You can do color correction, all kinds of neat stuff. Um, and so there's a 5x5 five five flipbook. If I want to see what a 10x10 10 10 looks like, just type it in. And they're sort of like composing that in real time uh, so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, you can change the timing of it. You can get the proper aspect ratio if you want. A 10x10 10 10 happens to be good. Uh, and then you hit uh, export and it chews on it for a while. You can set all these options. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a super handy tool. I'm sure there's other tools that uh, utilize uh, flipbooks or animated textures for the things. Um, perfectly good tool and free uh, from Unity. So, um, okay, so I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. And so, one other thing that I'm, I'm going to do is uh, if this happens a lot in Unity Land, um, you need to set up your uh, you need to set up your rendering to be correct. Uh, and this is primarily if you're on PC. If you're on mobile, like, okay, go ahead, don't touch it, do forward rendering, like, don't do any post effects, you know, you'll run great. But if you're on PC or console, you really want to get in there, change your rendering to linear. Um, you want to uh, add the post processing stack. So over here, I've got my camera. Um, and so, like, you know, this is what it looks like without post-processing, and then uh, with post-processing, you know, you, you can add all kinds of anti-aliasing and vignette. Um, and then something that I'm going to get into later is Bloom, which is especially important for, uh, for particles. So what I've done here is I've taken this, uh, this ship and I've added a few components to it that I, I want to kind of uh, I'm going to include in this package, and, and they are useful for prototyping. Now, how many of you are familiar with Unity events? Okay, so I teach a uh, class at Champlain, and I told them about this, and they, they just thought it was a miracle. Uh, Unity events got rolled out with the UI system, and they're a way of the inspector doing drag and drop calling of, of other functions. And it's especially handy if you're working with designers, but even if you're a programmer, I think it can be really handy for um, just wiring things up in, in a way that you can feel safe about. Um, and it also makes it so that you don't have to write every permutation of code or every effect that you want to do. So, um, and anybody that's used Unreal and like gotten into the whole blueprint thing, like, you know, there is definite value into not writing code for every single effect that you do. So what I've created here is just a, a Unity event script called test input. It's really simple. All it is is it says, um, hey, check for a key. And when that key gets hit, which can get set in the inspector, then call this unity event. And the unity event in the inspector gets shown as this list of fields that can get filled in. 
And so each field is pointing to an object and then calling a method on one of the scripts on this object. And so if you want to quickly try something out, uh, it's just a really handy way of getting in there and, um, and trying something. So what this is going to do is uh, it's going to um, talk to another component on here, uh, and then it's going to set the visual to be uh, invisible. And the, the other component it's going to talk to is right here, which is another tool called Prefab Instantiator. So Prefab Instantiator is going to take the, the uh, a Prefab and put it in that place. So when I hit play here, oh, compiler. Oh, you know what? I think I... Oh, good gravy. Okay, I think when I hit that create, I accidentally created some stuff that I shouldn't have. That was like <coughs> Murphy's Law. All right, so I'm going to hit All right, so now when I hit D, that guy goes away, blows up. So that would give you a way of just iterating on that spaceship uh, without having to um, include any other stuff. So uh, that's boring, though. It looks like crap. It hasn't gotten all the way filled out, but you have a starting place. This is a way that you can iterate. And anybody that's done effects knows that you need to get in a position where you can iterate. And sure, like taking your effect and setting it off to the side, hitting restart over and over and getting the particle right is one thing, but you want to get it in context. And the more context we can get, the better. So, uh, so what I'm going to do now is build up that particle a bit and add some stuff that is going to make it more interesting. So the first thing is, uh, like I said, when I did detonator, I kind of like broke down explosions into their constituent parts. And two things that really help are an immediate flash when the explosion starts and a bunch of sparks coming up. So here I'm going to take this, this explosion. Oh, I already had a copy of it there. So, and we're going to take sparks. We've got a few parts here. Got some sparks like that. We're gonna flash like that. <coughs> I'll take them and I'll put them both in here. Line them up. Apply that. Now let's see how this looks when we do this. So it's not bad. Looks like our, our sparks are actually sorting uh, behind our uh, explosion. Um, so let's go and kind of troubleshoot that a little bit. So that you can control by changing. I mean, the position of the things does make a difference for like a top-down game. Um, you also have uh, these sorting values. Um, that will let you fudge how how things are uh, how things are working. So if I say change this to like a negative value, I get it shown up more in front. So I'll apply that. Hit play. Okay. So we kind of got like some building blocks here, uh, but something that I want to like stress as you're as you're going with this is that the rendering setup for particles is not optimal like by default. What you're probably used to in Unity is using these old style particles particle shaders, um, but they recently introduced the standard shader, um, and uh, the standard shader actually is um, uh, it can do all kinds of effects that you had to use different shaders for that you had to um, even like distortion which uh, you know you had to like go hack the old glass or water shader um, or write your own so it's just a really full feature thing that integrates with the part system so if we take and instead of uh, so here's here's a shader this is actually the same explosion, but with HDR, and that has no flash on it. 
it's actually pushing into the overbright range. And when it goes off, it's actually creating a glow according to the bloom and the post processing. The one thing you need to watch out for with this is that, so if I look at the material, so I've actually pushed the value of that texture above one. So when the when the renderer gets it, it says, oh, I, you know, you are exceeding the bounds of what's visual. I'm going to go into the bloom. And you can tune that to, like, this is, this is the answer to your games, which were blooming everything in the past. Now you can actually use the HDR values to decide what's going to bloom. The thing you need to watch out for with particle systems, though, is that as soon as you overdrive this value, all the color ranges on your... Uh, all the color ranges that you use on like color over lifetime, they need to be chilled out significantly. Because if those were what they would have been on a normal particle system, then the thing is just gonna be overdriven the whole time. So that interplay actually is really valuable. Like on a normal texture, uh, you're not gonna have this kind of like color over time control, but on a particle system, you can overdrive the HDR value in the, in the um, standard shader and then turn down the color and the color over time and kind of like tune it to hit the glow exactly when you want it to. So, um, and then, so from here on out, the examples I'm going to show are going to, uh, we're all going to be in HDR land. Okay. So now I, I, you know, I feel like for what I was showing you there, that was kind of like, hey, you're a programmer, you haven't done anything with effects. You want to get uh, you want to you want to get some explosions going quickly. You don't want to go bug an artist. You know you can do that. Um, now who I'm really going to be speaking to is artists who want to be getting some interactivity in there and don't want to bother a programmer. Um, so let's go to uh, back to here. So now we're going to get into four other components that are part of this package. And I'm really trying to write these in a way that is like generic. Um, so the first one is damager. Uh, that talks to health and removes hit points from health. Then there's this idea of breakable, which is going to manage uh, when rigid bodies are going to come out of one source. And then there's explosive force, which is going to grab a bunch of rigid bodies and push them around. <clears throat> so now I'm going to switch back to Unity. Okay, so the first thing that I've done in this setup is uh, add some guns. And these guns are shooting lasers, and they don't do anything. I can still hit D, though. So I've got a few spawners. They're just shooting ships down there. Uh, so we've got like kind of a cheap mobile top-down shooter where we can prototype some effects. So the lasers that these guns are shooting, uh, if I look right here, have a simple implementation of what I'm calling the damager. And so all that's doing is it's saying, hey, if I climb something that's in the layer mass that I've defined, if it has a simple health, then I'll take damage on simple health. And I know you might be thinking you more, you know, sees the programmers, oh, you should be decoupling this event. I do do some of that later, but I'm just trying to be direct with this. So uh, each of so what I need to do at this point is get a health onto the ship so that it knows that it's been hit by a damager. So what I'm starting with from the prior scene is this test input. That's where I hit B, nothing happens when it gets a violator. So instead, what I'm going to do is swap out that testing with simple health. And so it has just a couple fields. It's got hit points, and then it's got a unity event for what happens when you die. So really, it's like the same model, but it's triggering, uh, triggering a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to just take the spawners. Oops. And where is this guy? Okay. 
Now they're going to spawn health. They have a little bit more hit points than they did before. And so, so you're seeing that like HDR explosion that was overdrawn. Oh yeah, I decided to rotate because it might be a little more interesting. So, okay. So looking at health, So again, it, the code in this is really not, not that interesting. Oh, I did keep, so take damage is what gets called by the damager, and then it knows if it's run out of hit points, then it calls die, and it's got a few um, helper routines to enable it to destroy itself. They can get called by the same unity event. So now what I want to do is set up, um, set up a breakable and show how when that explosion happens, we want the pieces of the ship to go flying. So, oops. So I'm going to change out the spawner here and go to uh, break wall. Where's my buddy break wall? Okay, so breakable, looking at the hierarchy, still has simple health, but then it has a script called breakable. All breakable does is uh, keeps a list of colliders that uh, are sitting underneath it. I think that's my phone. Um, I forgot to tell myself to silence my cell phone. So uh, this keeps a list of all the colliders and then does some logic when Break now is called. So let's see what happens when we run this. All right, so there's some things happening in here that still need some explanation, but it's definitely getting more interesting. So the first thing is let's look at breakable. So over time, uh, we've used Breakable a lot in either a lot of Headmaster and used it in this new prototype. And you know, it, it's a there's lots of ways to do matching of chunks, and you can go really crazy with it too. This is kind of like a foundation, but all this is saying is, hey, give me a list of rigid bodies, tell me when to break them, and I'll manage it for you. Now, there's a few different scenarios that you need to think about when you're doing breakables. Um, and this is, this is something which I just think if you're if you tried this stuff you end up hitting on this, these issues but if you haven't tried it you, you won't know they're there and really that is that the way that unity composes colliders um, I'm just going to go back to the deck for a little bit so you need to know that if you put a rigid body over a hierarchy in unity it will it will look for colliders underneath it, and it will compose one collider out of that whole thing. Now, it can be really handy. Like, say you don't want to use mesh colliders for everything. You want to make a bunch of boxes. You want to have them on individual game objects. The rigid body will treat that as one thing. It also gives you the benefit where if you need to catch on collision enter up on that component, then rigid body will actually catch it and pass it to that. Uh, so many cases that I've seen where people are, are doing breakable stuff, they'll actually put rigid body, like kinematic rigid bodies on each of the pieces beforehand. And then what that'll do is it'll make it so that the, if those colliders get hit, the rigid body up top doesn't know about it and you need to go through some gyrations to like get your, your actual on collision message passed to the right place. So that's just something to know about. Now you can do destruction by just instantiating a destroyed version of the thing. Like that's fine. Um, hide, hide the spaceship, spawn the destroyed spaceship, um, you know, but that's, that's not as, as uh, if, if your state of your objects has started to change, like maybe you have damage effects on them, you might want to keep those things around. Um, it might also be a heavier instantiation to, you know, bring a whole object back on. Uh, so there's a lot of different strategies for doing this, but in terms of building the hierarchy, you need to know about that. Um, so going back to Unity, let's run this again. So the other part is that these things go flying, uh, and there's a reason. 
And the reason for that is that the effect that is getting spawned by the ships, so that gets right here. So this is the effect, this is a particle, but then it has a component called explosive force. This kind of thing gets included in most of the Unity examples, and it's easy to, you know, easy to, you know, overlap sphere. You know, if you've, if you've done Unity tutorials, you've probably seen this. Uh, there's a few features that you can add to it that make it really handy, though. One is adding a falloff curve and having it be uh, visual is really nice. And decoupling that from the amount of damage that the thing does can also be very handy. Um, uh, also, I like to add torque to it so I can control how much stuff spins. Um, and then there's a few other things about running on start, how it delays, uh, you know, layers that you want to affect. You can kind of build up your, your way that you do explosive forces um, to fit what you need. But uh, out of the box, most of the examples just like, hey, here, run it, have a force, have a radius. So building that into your, to your explosion as a separate component um, will be pretty handy. Okay, so uh, one other component which I want to talk about in this, so you'll notice, oh actually, I don't know if they will, let's see, Are they shrink? Yeah, they do. So watch the pieces. They don't, they don't snap, disappear, right? So they shrink. <laughs> so one of the things that you really need to manage with uh, any effects is like appearing and disappearing things instantly will always draw the eye. So a cheap hack that you can do instead of you know taking the time to attach effects, which I'll do in a little bit, is you can um, just have the thing set its scale, run a little car routine, uh, show it for a bit, and then set the scale over time. So I have a component called Destroyer in this package that just you know instead of just destroying it at time, it's like okay, hang out, okay, shrink, now go away. All right, so the, the last demo that includes the, uh, the spaceship stuff is I'm going to get into uh, what if we turn this ship into something a little bigger. Um, there's nothing saying this has to be a top-down shooter, so we're going to make this more like a cruiser, something that we could really appreciate. Um, so I'm going to shoot it, uh, and then, okay, I don't know, it's, it's okay. You know, I made it bigger, tweaked the sparks. One trick that is very handy with um, explosions is the idea of a spray with a uh, sublimiter. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to blow the thing up again. So now, now mind you, there's only one emitter difference from what you saw. And here's what's extra handy, is that that's using the same material as the main explosion. So each of those little guys that's coming out is just the same flip book getting sprayed behind. And, you know, explosions are kind of fractal by nature as it is. And so reusing your materials in, like, different ways, changing the, their coloring, changing their positioning, you can get a lot of mileage out of, like, not a lot of textures. So I'll just do that one more time. But there are some issues with this whole situation. Um, I am shooting this giant ship, and it is not doing anything. Uh, so I want to propose a little system here that comes in this package. It's called Damage Manager. <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, I'm going to break down how this works. So we get some hit effects. So the way that these hit effects happen um, I don't know how, how many of you have seen some of the recent talks about using scriptable objects for data uh, and for you know higher defining things instead of just cooking everything to your prefabs. Um, so two things about this whole system I think are, are a nice model. One is that uh, it's using scriptable objects to define interactions between ph physics materials. So it's saying okay, uh, ship metal hit um, you know laser energy. So then what is the effect that should get played? So that lives in some data. Um, oh, that's the default one. But like ship laser, okay. What's the health material? What's the damage material? Each the the laser 
the damager carries a physic material on it just because it's handy to have it instead of like a tag. You could just use that. Um, and then it defines the hit effect. And then we keep all that in a list uh, that lives here. And so this is like our list of all, all of our uh, damage material or damage data is in the game. And then we have this little guy, damage manager, that keeps a handle on that list. And so, you know, I'm really in agreement with a lot of the, you know, people that are espousing using external data instead of prefab data for this stuff. And this is a way that you could have a whole team of, of artists going into finding this data. You can pile other stuff in there, like you want to have, um, you know, what kind of bullet pockmarks do you want? What kind of audio do you want to have? It's, it's the perfect case for it because you don't want the object that is getting hit to care. You don't want the... Um, the bullet to carry. Somebody's got to carry, but you don't want, you know, you, you want some intermediary to be making this decision. Um, so damage manager uh, also relies on the way that it even knows about these things. Is I, I moved on from um, in the prior examples I had simple health and simple damage. Now I'm just, you know, I, I made those examples to just show kind of like a non-confusing piece of code. Uh, but as you can see, this is actually dispatching a C-sharp event uh, every time it's taking damage, and we're using a set of event args that we configure um, right at, at that time. It's a static event, so basically the damage manager just hangs out, listens for that static event to, to happen. Oh, it's like, oh, somebody took damage. I got to help it took damage. Where, where is the info? Okay, I got two colliders in the contact. I, I'm going to search through my list, find what um, find what data I need, get the effect, and I'm going to put it in the right place. And, and the ship and the laser are not the wiser. So, um, and then the last bit that I want to show is with breakables. Uh, what I showed before was just breaking rigid bodies, but it can be really handy on those rigid bodies to have a component that has some information. Um, and so the, the ship here is actually going to be able to handle um, spawning effects on breaks, and it's going to start spawning uh, uh, sparks and smoke out of the mesh verts. So we, we have more of like, okay, that's like a serious explosion. So... Oh, and let me, I forgot to mention this, but I love audio. Like, I, audio is super important to me. I did not include audio in this work, uh, but hug your audio person. <laughs> hug, hug them hard. They love you. Don't abuse them. Um, I, 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 I love audio. This is a silent presentation. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, the way that this works is... Each one of those pieces has a breakable chunk, uh, has an array of break effects, and the break effects are able to get assigned to the mesh renderer that they're next to. Um, the death effect is the explosion. Some parts I've assigned to be little explosions because the little pieces, some assigned to be big explosions because they're big. Made a bunch of other effects that all use the same exact stupid texture. So you're seeing in, in this whole thing, it's like, okay, I did make a smoke. There's a smoke in there. But this is two textures getting repeated a lot. Uh, and with HDR, you, you get a lot of mileage out of, uh, out of not a lot of stuff. So there's ways I would extend that um, that I didn't get around to yet, but I'd like to in the system. One is that it would be great if when you hit one breakable chunk, it communicated to the other ones and said to explode in some sort of distance so that you get like reaction uh, you know, you blow the ship up on the port side and it starts the explosion here and kind of ripples out. That's not, you know, difficult to do in this. I just ran out of time. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of ways this could go. It's kind of like, you know, just pieces. And I think that anytime somebody's doing something in Unity, I, I like to get a bunch of pieces that don't know about each other way more than I like to get, you know, the all singing, all dancing system that you must use this way. Because... You know, I don't want to plug in that giant scary system, which may get deprecated. Um, so, yeah. So coming back to the PowerPoint, um, 
So the key points of an explosion, get good source, uh, set yourself up to iterate a lot quickly. Even if you don't have your, your game yet, you can figure out, you know, how's this going to feel when I shoot? How's it going to feel? And that damager can be like in the demo or the prototype I'm going to show you, that damager is used for melee. Like we use animation events to say, hey, damager, turn on when I'm doing this. So they're, they're very generic type things. And even if you don't take stuff from this package, like it's pretty basic stuff. Um, yeah, go through, do the do the song and dance to get the rendering set up right out of the box. Um, you know, I, I think uh, Unreal ends up looking great by default. Unity can look exactly the same if you do like five things. Uh, don't disappear your models or appear your models very abruptly when doing effects. Uh, manage repetition. Um, and then something I didn't get into, which uh, maybe people have answers for, is I found that inherent velocity in like aerial explosions is like wacky. Like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I've made contrived cases where it behaves perfectly, and then I'll go try and plug it into like this thing, and it goes crazy. So um, hey, if anybody knows the rules, the secret rules for inherent velocity on a world space particle system, please tell me. Um, I'd love to share it with everyone else. So the last thing I'm going to show you is kind of like, OK, I, I love all of this stuff. And I've been doing explosions for a long time in various games. Um, so I, I finally had a chance to do a, do a prototype, spend like a month with a good friend of mine. And you know, I, I pitched him this idea. And um, so how many of you know what this game is? Okay. So this game is called Myth 2. Um, this is a game uh, really about blowing stuff up, in my opinion. Now, sure, it's like a tactical, real-time strategy game. Uh, there are you know, lots of cerebral things to it, but the thing that always stuck with me was this little jerk, the dwarf, who has two things he can do. He's slow, but he's got Molotov cocktails, and he's got satchel charges. And you pretty much like he's in my, he's like the most powerful unit in the game in a lot of ways, but you got to deal with these hordes of enemies. And so I always wanted to make a game that was just like focused around those mechanics, like this, this powerful but weak character um, that was like playing with fire and all the sort of emergence that came from that. So I pitched this to my friend uh, whose name is Shandana Ekenayake, but he goes by Eka. Um, and he just left uh, Uber Entertainment, the makers of um, Monday Night Combat and uh, Planetary Annihilation. Um, anyway, he left, founded the studio called Outer Loop, and he had like a month slack. So we said, hey, let's, uh, let's go try something. And so I'm going to show you like a quick video of it, and then I'm going to just kind of bounce around the Unity project and show some of the like interesting things. You can kind of think of it as like all the components that I showed you built out, you know, with more features and I'll talk about them. So, no, not enjoying it yet. So this is two minutes. So, so you're, uh, you're basically a chemist. We're trying to figure out why you get only a Molotov cocktail. You're a chemist. So you got a hatchet and Molotov cocktails around your belt, and your lab has been taken over by aliens. So you're kind of going into the depths. And you have a few different verbs. Uh, and like I said, this is just a prototype. This is like, what would we do to play around with these mechanics? So that's the equivalent of the dwarf satchel charge. Um, and I have, to, I have to say that these effects I stubbed, I didn't actually build those exact particles, those are uh, Crypto 289 off the asset store. I'm just going to be a little totally frank about that. So these are many of the same components. It's, uh, you know, explosive force combined with damager to make that bomb. Uh, the characters have breakables on them that when they get hit, they, they just throw their jibs everywhere. That spawner there uses the same kind of stuff. So the idea with this game is that you can go and set up attacks. So you walk into a room and you see a group of enemies that are all standing around 
they're kind of like frozen until they've been awakened. And so if you go hit them with a hatchet, then of course they wake up. But uh, in the next scenario, you see you walk into a room and you just get a chance to kind of plan out your attack. So you have this flammable goo. You can leave trails around on the ground. And I extended uh, health to be flammable. And so if a damager hits it with a damage type of fire, then it knows to ignite. And then there's a little fire controller which talks to all the fires around it and can do like these rippling fire effects, including lighting characters on fire. And so the poor aliens are all going to blow up. So anyway, that is, uh, we haven't announced this, or, I mean, it's just like a prototype, but this is sort of like, what would, you know, what would Ben do with these ideas if he got a chance to, to spend a month on something? So, uh, you know, I've been going, I don't actually know what time is it. I just have a timer, 3.11. Okay, so we just got a couple minutes. I'm just going to like fire this up and just poke around a little bit and show you some stuff. So that spawner right here uh, contains, you know, it's broken up into a few parts. One thing that's kind of cool about this is the damage effect is actually mesh particles that split when they land. Uh, the characters themselves, um, nothing really fancy, honestly. They just have a breakable on top, well, a few other components to control their behavior and stuff. Um, there's a damager. Where's my break? Every large body, so that there's a few different jibs that kind of hang out on these guys, and as soon as they die, then the unity event tells the break to break, uh, hides the rest of it. Um, oh, one, if okay, I'll leave you with this final thing. Anytime you're doing explosions, uh, you're gonna want to do if, if you're doing explosions and instantiating anything or activating anything, <clears throat> you want a one frame delay. So if you write down anything, this can be so frustrating. If on, in one piece of code, you're like hey, instantiate a thing, now run my explosion, you'll you'll race and you'll end up missing the thing. So instantiate, you'll do the explosion, the thing will come into the world and then it won't move. So uh, if you look at the way that um, the explosive force is done, and I think even one of the Unity examples gets into this, do your instantiation, yield for a frame, then do the force, and then stuff will fly. So, um, yeah, so that was my crazy live demo of a whole bunch of stuff about explosions, and I am going to post this on uh, GitHub. Um, I We don't have a lot of time, but I was actually taking suggestions for names. If anybody wants to ask a question, I'm happy to take questions in the remaining couple minutes. Um, and if you want to pitch me a name for this package, then I'll register the GitHub for it right now. Yeah? Um, Destructo logic. <laughs> Destructo logic? Okay. Anyway, I have a couple questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Um, first one, how, how do you make the explosion scale or scale down for mobile? Uh, performance wise, you mean? Yeah, because um, like you have a whole lot of things happening, and um, yeah, there we go. You have a whole lot of things happening, and how do you make sure that you have less things happening for specific platforms? Sure, that was one thing that Detonator did was it had a detail slider or a detail value that just scaled the emissive count or the emitter count on each thing. So you could just write something that grabbed all your particle systems like on a top level and um, you know scaled the emitter value. There's also a field on each particle system for the maximum number of particles. So you could just set that. That gets a little weird though because sometimes you just see particles disappear that you don't want to disappear. The, the better thing to do would be to write a component walk through, find all the emitter parts of the um, particle systems and scale them by some, some value for mobile. The other thing to do is to take your really nice particle effect and make a movie out of it and then turn it into a flipbook. That's like probably the, the, you know, and you could probably automate that if you were like a big studio with a lot of money. Uh, if you weren't, then you could take a lot of your own time to do that. Um, and uh, how, do you, how do you propagate the explode? Uh, at one point in time we were talking about um, having the explosion propagate onto other parts of a specific object. Yeah. Um, just 
I guess briefly, how did you um, how did you make it propagate all the way through? Well, the way that I would do any the way the propagation happened the catalyst is just that things have health, and so a damager has a, a field for doing area damage, and it has the same fall off curve. Um, I don't know if I have a thing handy in here, but you can create a fall off curve for damage that gets done uh, by a like damager component goes and finds health. So just put health on things. And then the other thing is it, you'll find a great benefit if you put in something to manage time so that those things don't happen instantaneously. So like when we do ripple effects in here, we'll like put a little delay on there by the amount of, by distance or time so that it goes like boom, 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 instead of like, you can end up implementing that and just having the whole world like explode at once and it's like no fun. So you need to put a little bit of work into like making distance and time matter. Yeah. So destructo logic. That's uh, the current current winner. Anybody else have one? Okay. I got a headmaster T-shirt for uh, two more people. Give me some suggestions. I got a headmaster T-shirts for you. What then? Boombox. Boombox. Ooh. I like that. Anybody else? Any other actual questions? Okay. Well, thank you all for coming and braving the snow and listening to uh, us talk about destruction. Appreciate it. Oh, did oh, my question is somewhat irrelevant. I was curious why, uh, why the character in Catalyst ended up suspiciously looking like Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> well, because it's a prototype and we're not actually like sh like selling it. We wanted to say scientist, so when we told the concept artist scientist. That's why he came back with it. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I don't think we will ship with that like this. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Can you get a t-shirt? T-shirt. Uh, good job. Thanks. I always wish there was more time. Thanks. For, like, um, yeah. Tutorials. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would just yeah. go on. Uh, Great talk, man. <laughs> Thanks. Great talk. Thanks for asking the question. Really, really yeah. solid. Um, Let me give you a t shirt. Sweet. <laughs> oh. What are you up to now? Where's that? I don't know. Pretty much. What size? Medium large. <laughs> you think it'll be bigger or small? Uh, it might be too small. Uh, I'll take a look here. Yeah. So I'll take your time. We have enough. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like um, when when you mentioned um, being able, like basically having to uh, quickly iterate. Yeah. Over the past little while, I was doing some people's 2DX, and um, because of the fact that I didn't have the Lua stuff uh, in, I just spent time putting Lua in so that I could quickly iterate. Otherwise, it made no sense, right? Like I I have to compile and then. I'll uh, compile again, make a small little change. Oh, it still doesn't make sense. Da, 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 da. So yeah, like it's that's a must. I mean, if you don't have that, then you're not developing. Well, it's hard when you're working by yourself. Yeah. Stop work harder. Make a full myself so I can. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, great talk. Great, great talk. Yeah. Uh, Chris, about, um, how will we be able to get? How will we know what the game has? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I didn't even yeah. Have contact. I remember. Um, I guess. Um, look, I don't know. You're on Twitter. That's true. No, when no, look, no, look, no, look no, up on the on the Okay. Okay. Thank you. I just I recognize you. You're a great person. Yeah. Were you one of the rest? Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. I was like, the front row for that, and I was so happy that you didn't get hurt. Well, <laughs> unless yeah. you did get hurt. So just a little bit. Uh, you know, they elbow drop part. You just miss it naturally. But, um, yeah. 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 Ye
you know, you've got to be willing to be I just want to say, and I can do it with So the get the get the head of the yeah, yeah. I'm gonna clean it up and basically just let it get off. Okay. Kind of. I don't want to put it in the back. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I love game field. So this is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought your game was definitely so. Are you just like are you the yes. like, I'm the fighting game? Yes. I'm the I'm the programmer. Uh, uh, the was really the designer. Uh, I thought you did. Thanks a lot. Here. Hi. Hi. Uh, well, I'm just spit back in. So, uh, if you look for GitHub and then my name, uh, you'll see my picture. It'll be, it'll be on there. Uh, I haven't decided what to do. That's why I just talked this before. Yeah, so that's true. You'll see your GitHub. Yeah, I don't want to talk Oh, I hope you use it. Yeah, my game is not too much explosion, but I feel like if your game has healthy damage, it's more like uh, I will tell you I want to like, work to work on the Oh, okay. Yeah, like that is what it is. Yes, yeah. 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 See you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>